Evil takes many forms, and the Bible serves as a rich source of examples. It's fascinating how this ancient text portrays the various facets of evil through its characters. However, there are some characters in the Bible who don't get as much limelight, leaving us to explore their stories in apocryphal texts. One such character is Nimrod, and today, we'll dive into his intriguing tale. Now, when it comes to Nimrod, there are two ways to look at him. Some see him as a righteous man, while others paint him as the archetypal idolater, tyrant, and a truly wicked person. In many non-canonical writings, Nimrod is often referred to as Nimrod the Evil, emphasizing his notorious reputation. In the Bible, Nimrod's first appearance can be found in the Table of Nations in Genesis 10. He was born as the son of Cush, the grandson of Ham, and the great-grandson of Noah. Nimrod grew up to be a fierce warrior and a skilled hunter. He eventually became a king, ruling over several great cities, some of which he had a hand in building. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. The Bible tells us that Cush was Nimrod's father, and Nimrod became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was known as a mighty hunter before the Lord, which paints him as a man of great strength and boldness. Nimrod's legacy includes founding or conquering the first centers of his kingdom, which included cities like Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, and Kalna in Shinna. He later expanded his rule to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Kala, and Rezin. These achievements demonstrate the extent of his power and influence. Now, when it comes to interpreting Nimrod's character, there are two opposing views. Some admire him for his strength and grand achievements, viewing him as a remarkable figure who embodies all the qualities a man could desire. In this view, the Bible's mention of the cities he built or conquered serves as a celebration of his legacy. However, the more commonly accepted perspective paints Nimrod as a sinister figure, mainly due to his association with the Kingdom of Babylon. This kingdom was notorious for its rebellion against God, famously exemplified by the construction of the Tower of Babel. In conclusion, Nimrod's character in the Bible remains enigmatic, with interpretations ranging from a virtuous hero to a wicked villain. His story is a captivating glimpse into the complexities of biblical narratives, allowing us to explore the concept of evil from different angles. This structure was believed by some to have been built on Nimrod's orders, not as a testament to God, but as a means for humanity to reach the heavens. This reflects Nimrod's audacious attitude as he saw himself as equal to God. In this interpretation, the biblical simile alike Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, doesn't carry a complimentary tone. Instead, it suggests that Nimrod hunted and killed before the Lord, prioritizing his thirst for blood over God's presence. Furthermore, in this version, Nimrod is thought to be not a hunter of game but a hunter of men. This is supported by his conquest of numerous kingdoms, where his ruthlessness and brutality played a pivotal role in consolidating his power across various regions. Nimrod's dominance was so absolute that the land of Assyria is later referred to as the land of Nimrod in the Book of Micah.
highlighting his undeniable success in his conquests. It is believed that Nimrod inspired others to place their trust in their own abilities rather than in God. He propagated the idea that if a person wanted something, they had the power to take it with or without God's blessing. A first-century historian, Flavius Josephus, wrote about this account, mentioning that Nimrod was born with physical gifts that surpassed other men and possessed unmatched strength. Instead of attributing glory to God, Nimrod chose to rebel against him and saw his advantages as self-cultivated, owing nothing to anyone. Nimrod aimed to instill this mindset in his people, persuading them not to worship God but to believe in their own courage and power to attain happiness. Josephus goes on to explain that Nimrod's ascent to power played a significant role in promoting this way of thinking. He used his position in government to pressure the devout into aligning with his views, as they became dependent on his authority. Josephus's narrative aligns with the Bible, where it's mentioned that when God saw the tower under construction, he didn't destroy it or its builders. The flood had not deterred them, so God chose a different approach. He caused confusion among the workers, implemented a diverse set of languages, and prevented them from understanding each other. Interestingly, rabbinical commentaries offer another idea suggesting that Nimrod's defiance of God remained steadfast even after the confusion set in. He supposedly constructed a chariot carried by birds to reach heaven, aiming for a one-on-one -on -one showdown with God. This again highlights Nimrod's physical prowess. In the first book of Chronicles, we are told that Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on earth. However, whether the term mighty and warrior are accolades or condemnations for Nimrod remains a subject of debate. Given that God does not appear to endorse Nimrod in the Bible and opposes the construction of the Tower of Babel, the latter interpretation seems more plausible. Regardless of his role in the tower's construction, one undeniable fact is Nimrod's remarkable physical abilities. He is consistently portrayed as a proficient warrior in all available texts, a trait demonstrated by his successful conquests. Some Jewish traditions even suggest that Nimrod inherited the garments of Adam and Eve from Cush, imbued with divine greatness, making the wearer invincible. Regarding Nimrod's involvement in the Tower of Babel's construction, it's crucial to note that the Bible never explicitly names Nimrod as the responsible party. While many, including Josephus, believe Nimrod likely directed or approved the tower's construction, it remains uncertain. Furthermore, his motivations for this decision vary, with some suggesting it was a tribute to God, a guiding beacon for his people, or a passage to heaven to lead an army against the Lord. In various early Jewish tales, such as those by Philo of Alexandria, a Hellenistic philosopher, Nimrod is portrayed as the leader of the Hamites, Joktan as the leader of the Semites, and Fenic as the leader of the Japhrodes, all involved in the tower's construction. Philo also touched upon Nimrod being a mighty hunter before the Lord. These diverse interpretations add depth and complexity to Nimrod's character and his place in biblical narratives. These differing views on Nimrod's character and actions add depth to the debate about him. Some interpret the biblical reference to Nimrod as mighty hunter before the Lord as opposition to the Lord, rather than a compliment. 
However, contradictory views exist regarding Nimrod's involvement in the construction of the Tower of Babel. Ephraim the Syrian, a prominent Christian theologian and writer from the 4th century, believed that Nimrod was against building the tower and considered him righteous. Some Jewish traditions support this view, suggesting that Nimrod fled to Assyria after learning of the tower's construction plans, not wanting any part in blasphemy. In return for his loyalty to God, God rewarded him with the territories associated with him, and the land of Nimrod became a symbol of his devotion. In an ancient Arabic work known as Kitab al magal or the Book of Rolls, it's stated that Nimrod built several towns from the ground up and ruled them for 69 years. During his lifetime as a ruler, Nimrod saw a piece of black cloth and a crown in the sky, which intrigued him. He became so fixated on this vision that he summoned a weaver named Sasson to create a crown exactly like the one he'd seen. This led to the belief that the crown had descended from heaven and was a divine gift and endorsement of Nimrod's rule. However, some regarded this vision as a mere delusion and a sign of Nimrod's wavering sanity. The Book of Rolls also describes how Nimrod became a worshipper of fire and encouraged his subjects to idolize the elements, rather than God. In Midrash Rabbi, a compilation of Jewish scriptural exegesis, an encounter between Nimrod and Abraham is recounted. Nimrod commands Abraham to worship fire, water, and the clouds themselves. Abraham questions the senselessness of this and points out the hierarchy in these elements. Nimrod, feeling outsmarted, changes his worship quickly, making himself appear foolish in the end. This text also provides a lesser-known account of Abraham's brother, Haran, who was present when Abraham was thrown into the fire by Nimrod. Haran contemplated which side to support, but ultimately declared his allegiance to Abraham. When he survived the furnace, he remained loyal to Abraham, but eventually, he met a tragic fate as his belly opened. These diverse accounts and interpretations highlight the complexity of Nimrod's character and the moral and religious debates surrounding him in various traditions and writings. Haran's actions in the face of uncertainty and danger reveal a complex mix of loyalty, courage, and resolve. Initially, his plan to side with the victor of the altercation might seem spineless and cowardly. However, when Abraham enters the furnace and Haran declares his allegiance to his brother, he shows tremendous resolve. Even after witnessing Abraham being thrown into the fire, Haran remains true to his commitment. His loyalty remains unwavering, even when he is ultimately thrown into the furnace himself. He goes to his death with his honor intact, displaying unwavering loyalty to his brother and to God. The theme of Nimrod's worship of the elements and his conflict with Abraham is present in several Jewish and Islamic traditions. In some interpretations, this confrontation becomes symbolic of the broader conflict between good and evil, or the clash between monotheism and polytheism. The account you mentioned is attributed to Pseudophilo, an anonymous text containing biblical antiquities. Different versions of the confrontation between Abraham and Nimrod can also be found in the Talmud and various rabbinical writings from the Middle Ages. In some versions, the conflict is portrayed as a philosophical discussion between the two characters, 
while the longer version features more profound imagery and action. In this longer version, Nimrod's astrologers or soothsayers predict the birth of a baby who will grow up to be Abraham, the one who will challenge Nimrod's idolatry and ultimately lead to his downfall. They usually describe the birth as the appearance of a new star or an image seen in Nimrod's dreams. To prevent this prediction from coming true, Nimrod, much like King Herod in another biblical account, orders the murder of all newborn babies. However, Abraham's mother manages to escape and gives birth to him in secret. Later, after finding God, Abraham confronts Nimrod, urging him to abandon his idolatry or face God's wrath. Offended by Abraham's request, Nimrod orders the gathering of wood for a massive bonfire, intending to burn Abraham. Yet, when the fires are lit, Abraham emerges unharmed. Nimrod then challenges Abraham to a battle, assembling a formidable army to confront him. This narrative highlights the ongoing struggle between monotheism and idolatry and the extraordinary events associated with Abraham's mission. Abraham's encounter with Nimrod takes on various forms in different narratives, highlighting the complexity of their relationship. In some versions, Abraham miraculously produces an army of gnats, which devastates Nimrod's army. One gnat burrows into Nimrod's head, driving him insane. In contrast, other accounts describe Nimrod surrendering to Abraham after witnessing his emergence from the fire. He prepares to offer sacrifices to God and presents Abraham with gifts, including a giant slave named Eliza, who is portrayed as Nimrod's son in these stories. In the Bible, we learn that Abraham eventually settled in Canaan, which some interpret as him fleeing from Nimrod, who was secretly plotting revenge. However, this scenario presents a chronological inconsistency because the Tower of Babel was constructed long before Abraham's birth. Islamic narratives seek to place Nimrod and Abraham in the same generation and depict them engaging in discussions. The Quran provides an example of Abraham speaking with an unnamed king, believed to be Nimrod, about God's power over life and death. Nimrod responds with pride, claiming that he also possesses the ability to give life and cause death. Commentaries suggest that Nimrod brings forth two condemned men and kills one before Abraham, while sparing the other to demonstrate his power to Abraham. Attempting to equate himself with God or place himself on the same level as God. Abraham chastises Nimrod by challenging him to bring up the sun from the west, exposing Nimrod's limitations. Consequently, Nimrod exiles Abraham. Despite his minimal mention in the Bible, Nimrod's influence has permeated future theories about the Bible and various forms of literature. For example, in the 19th century book The Two Babylons by Christian minister Alexander Hislop, Nimrod is depicted as the son and consort of the goddess of Babylon, forming the inspiration behind polytheism and goddess worship. Some interpretations within the book suggest the Catholic Church as an insidious invention by Nimrod and his mother to perpetuate pagan ideals from ancient Babylon. Nimrod even appears in Dante's Divine Comedy as a giant. The character of Nimrod continues to be a source of fascination and interpretation in various cultural and religious contexts. If you have any other stories or thoughts about Nimrod, feel free to share them in the comments. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and remember to subscribe for more content like this. Until next time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.